Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden and as this is our first video of 2023, Happy New Year. Hope you've had a good one and you've got lots to look forward to this year. Um, we are going to be giving you a little bit of a tour of the garden today so you can see what's going on in January. Um, you might be able to see around me there's not too much, just a few small details and I think those are the things that get you through these um, kind of colder, darker months. Um, but they're still definitely worth it. Um, you can see the hellebores around me are adding some colour to the garden um, and we've got a few bulbs to show you as well but this time of year is a slower time of year it's a time to rest and plan um, there are a few jobs that I like to do around the garden and I think while it's stripped back it's a really good time to tidy things up so I'm going to be um, pruning my roses pruning the apple trees um, I'll be organising my seeds possibly today possibly next week um, and just doing a general tidy up so um, this week I have actually managed to get out here and mow the lawn ahead of our winter bulbs coming up um, and we've got the snowdrops are starting to appear in the grass in front of me and um, these snowdrops I actually planted not last autumn but the one before um, and they didn't flower in their first year so I can see a couple of them flowering already and um, that gives me a lot of hope that we might get them flowering this year um, so I added 600 bulbs to the lawn um, in a sort of semicircle under this oak tree just to start off um, my wildflower area so I tend to let this area go really long and lush and it's full of bulbs um, and I'm not sure how many we're going to see flowering I'm sort of looking around now and trying to spot how many leaves I can see. Um, there aren't loads but hopefully over the years they'll spread um, and I would this coming autumn really like to add some more snowdrops to the lawn as well so we've got a bit more winter interest. Another thing I've been working on over the last few weeks is mulching. So around me here we've got the leaf mulch and um, if you watched our previous videos you would have seen us tidying up the leaves from the oak tree and the acer tree above me um, and getting a really lovely mulch on these beds and that's so good for feeding the soil. And then on the beds in our vegetable garden I use our homemade compost so I've been emptying our compost bins and getting a lovely layer of compost on as well. I'm still going on that I think I need to do another three wheelbarrows and then after that I'll be finished with my mulching um, so it would be really good to get that sorted and just know that you're nourishing the soil so that ahead of this year um, your plants will be fed, looked after and uh, the soil will be nice and moist for them as well. And then the last thing about this time of year is I think it's really important to take a rest for yourself. The days are shorter and there is a bit less to do out here. Um, and it's a good time to not put too much pressure on yourself. Just enjoy the slowness of the garden and the stillness um, and notice things like you don't need to mow the lawn constantly, which is um, a lot less stress than in the summer. And you don't need to weed as much because things aren't germinating so often and just enjoy the slowness of it all. And I've definitely been doing that this month and I will keep doing that for the next couple of months and I'd encourage you to do the same. Um, so let's go and have a look around at some of the things that we've got flowering in the garden before we get on with those January jobs. So I'm going to start here with two of our new hellebore plants and these two plants I bought from the garden centre a couple of weeks ago um, and these were funded by our Patreons so thank you everyone that's joined our Patreon. Um, these are called Early Red um, and this one flowers from November um, through winter which is really amazing. I actually have another one of these on that side and it starts as this dark red colour but it does fade to more of a pink and then in front of me we've got Picotty which doesn't flower as early but I bought this one because I think the colour is so pretty. It's a really soft pink and green colour. Um, I really love hellebores and I've got a few planted around the garden some of them flower a bit earlier than others, um, but these ones are especially early. The plants are really big, healthy, got these lovely dark green glossy leaves um, and the size of the flowers is just incredible. So I'd love to get some more plants like these to add to my hellebore collection. Um, but I do love having a mix of all the different colours and the different flowering times so that you can always be surprised through the winter each time you pop outside and there's another thing in flower. Um, it's just an exciting way of getting through these months. So uh, really pleased with those they're just a lovely thing to keep you going through the winter. Next up we have our winter flowering clematis which is still going strong um, and it's managed fine in these really cold um, nights that we've been having so this one is freckles um, with this beautiful dark pink kind of 
pattern on the um, petals and we've also got um, one called Jingle Bells and Jingle Bells has finished flowering now but um, this one's still going strong and growing a lot even though it's winter so cannot wait for this to cover the fence. Um, and apart from the hellebores and the clematis and a few early snowdrops that's more or less everything that's in flower now but there are tons of bulbs appearing in the soil now so I'll show you a few of those just so that we can feel hopeful for what's to come in the next few months and if you would really like to see some spring bulbs I'll also link to our video from last year when our spring bulbs were in flower so you know what to expect. Now excuse the unweeded bed I haven't gotten around to weeding this part of the garden yet but um, here you can see loads of irises popping up already so this is going to be um, an iris reticulata um, and it's a really pretty light blue iris and these will flower in February here and then we've also got this um, Dutch iris I think this one's Silver Beauty um, this will be flowering later on um, maybe April time um, but amazing to see these coming up through the soil already and there's a few tulips that are coming back from last year as well whether or not they'll flower um, it's hard to tell at this point but um, it's amazing when they do repeat flower over the years um, but other things are popping up as well in our vegetable garden so I'll go and show you how that's looking too. Here we are in our vegetable garden and there's a few things changing at the moment um, I do again need to do some weeding so bear with me on that one. You can see behind me the perennial kale was very unhappy about these frosts that we were having um, usually it should be fine but we had so many consecutive really really cold nights that a lot of our vegetables have actually just turned to mush um, including a lot of our perennial kale and I think it will survive now that um, the leaves that didn't make it have sort of rotted down and some of the stems have disintegrated as well. We've got our perennial onions in this bed that are just starting to send new shoots up um, and we've also got our elephant garlic which is sort of everywhere um, unintentionally. I I think I must have just left a few cloves in the compost bin or something but they're kind of popping up all over the place so I've got a couple in the onion bed, um, a couple in the turnip bed uh, and then there's a whole bed dedicated to them as well. But it's really nice to see those popping up because they're such a big sturdy plant. Um, it gives you kind of interest in the early months when there's not much else going on. They look a lot like a leek um, and the cloves are absolutely massive, they're really amazing so I can't wait to harvest those. I've also got a really good mulch down on these beds so um, it's just partially composted um, compost from our compost bins, a mix of vegetable scraps, grass cuttings, cardboard, duck mess um, but it will break down and feed the soil um, and it's really good for these asparagus beds they've got a really nice thick layer on them. Um, so everything's sort of taken care of here I just need to pop up and do a bit more weeding um, and a little bit more mulching but we're doing well so far for January, I think. So here we are at our raspberry patch and these are summer fruiting raspberries, which I've tied in hoops. Um, not the best display of hoops because the, um, the canes were popping up kind of all over the place. Um, when they're really long and clumped together, it's quite easy to make a sort of seamless um, hoop display, but they're not quite touching. So it looks a bit random this year, um, but it's still something that I like to do. And then when they do grow um, in the spring, the shoots will be nice and upright. Um, and it's just quite easy to harvest from because it's not all tangled up. I think it looks quite nice in the winter too, um, but I wanted to stop here because below me, you can see all of the crocus bulbs are starting to appear. And um, these flowered last year and they're coming back for a second year. They're a very tiny um, white crocus. I actually, um, got my bulbs mixed up and put them in the wrong place so these were supposed to be naturalized in the grass um, and then I had some um, of the newer um, crocus varieties that are really really big that I wanted to put in the bed got them the wrong way around not too happy about it to be honest but um, I'm going to leave them in because I think there's no way I'm going to get 500 crocus bulbs out of the lawn when I've planted them in really random places so um, it is what it is um, but this bed does look really lovely when those are in flower and um, again it's just nice to see the bulb popping up and giving you a bit of hope and it won't be long at all until we see those crocuses flowering. So now we've had a look around the garden it's time to get on with some jobs and the first thing I need to do is prune my roses. I really enjoy pruning my roses because it gives me a time to think about how I want them to look next year, what shape I want them to be in um, and it's just something that makes me feel excited so I've got two buckets, one's full of disinfectant for me to clean my snips between doing the plants um, and the second one is where I'm going to be putting the leaves that I'm taking off and the stems um, and you just want to make sure that you disinfect your snips between plants so that you're not contaminating. If one plant's poorly you don't want to spread the disease onto another one. So 
with this one, I should also say um, these are really cheap old secateurs. I had some really lovely Nuwaki ones, but um, unfortunately I broke them and I'm waiting on a part so I can fix them. So I'm gonna make do with these for now, but they are a bit rubbish, so <laughs> bear with me. Um, this one is Olivia Rose Austin and it's trained as a standard. So it's this really lovely kind of tree. Um, and I'm gonna take out some of these branches just so they don't rub on each other and it's got better airflow. And I'm also gonna remove the leaves and reduce the size. Um, so you just have to kind of get in there and start taking bits out. And it's easier to take the leaves off first so you can see what you're working with. Um, it does feel a little bit daunting at first starting to hack away at these things, but it really is a good thing to do and it will help you get a better shape on the plant next year and help it stay healthy with that good airflow between the branches. And while you're pruning these, you can notice if you look at the stems where the new growth points are for next year. So as I'm pruning them, I'll just make sure that I cut just above a growth point so that there's something that's going to grow out of that area and it doesn't just die back. And so there you can see that new kind of pinky shoot emerging from the stem and I just cut slightly above it. And it's always a little bit nerve wracking when you start this. So I think it's a good idea to start lightly and then uh, get a look around it and then go back in and take another layer off and you can go as gentle as you want. Um, but ultimately, if you have cut off a bit too much, it doesn't matter, it will grow back. As long as it's got some nice healthy soil, it will be absolutely fine. And you also want to remove any dead or damaged looking stems as well. So I can see here, there's a few little dead bits. I'm just gonna take those off. So there we go. I'm happy with how this one's looking. I've got rid of a lot of the small branches and it seems like there's quite good airflow in there now. Uh, my bucket's full, so I'm gonna go and empty that in the green waste bin, um, just in case there's any diseases in there that I don't want to add to my compost bin. Uh, gonna clean these and then we'll move on to the climbing rose, which is a little bit more creative because you can kind of bend the stems in interesting shapes. So next up, we've got climbing rose and this is compassion, has these really beautiful peach colored flowers in the summer. And you can see last year, I trained this in hoops. Um, and when you train it in hoops, you get this really lovely pattern on the fence in the winter, but you do get a lot of vertical growth in the summer, um, which is a really nice thing. So what I'll probably do with this is keep some of these longer stems and then continue to tie them back down onto the fence like this so that I keep getting more hoops and then eventually I hope to cover this whole fence in uh, these kind of wave shapes. Um, but before that, I will take off a few of the stems just so there's not too many. Um, and some of these are looking really big. They might not be that flexible. So we'll just have to see how we get on. So there you go, that's Compassion, um, trained in some strange hoop shapes. This one does look a little bit weird, but um, I like just experimenting with the different ways of training them and seeing what happens in the summer. So we'll keep an eye on that one and see how it goes. Um, but I know some people spend all day making really nice hoops and things out of these. And one day that's something I'd like to learn to do myself. So I'm happy with that for now. Um, I've got a couple more roses to do around the garden. So I'm gonna go off and finish those myself, but thank you so much for watching today. And remember to subscribe if you'd like to see our garden develop over the next few months and years, and we'll see you next time.